Good morning from Wilson Creek. It's another perfect morning. You can, you can kind of see the clouds kind of draped over the hill. There's blue skies, birds are singing. I got a beautiful rapid here. And it just doesn't get any better than this. So as you know, I like to do, I'm on a rock here, kind of in the rapids. Just heated up my meal, I'm letting it sit for a few minutes. I'm gonna enjoy a fantastic breakfast. And then to go get up the guys here in a second, I'll give them about 15 more minutes. And then we're gonna get on these rafts and uh, get on down the river. It's gonna be a good day. So we're here in camp this morning. I just woke the boys up. How'd you sleep, squirrel? Good. Slept good. Rate the campsite one to 10. Six. No. <laughs> yes. A six? This is a beautiful little campsite. This is six. I'd say seven. Six. Maybe a seven with, make it a, lose a mark for some trash. That's what I'm saying. Recent Get flooding is just Taking a bunch of stuff down of the river. This and just have a little more sloping. Hey, listen, when I'm talking on this thing, don't talk over no, me. No, you yeah. asked my question. Well, until I start talking, then you wait until no. another question. No. It worked perfect last night because we were just about out of options. Could have a little more beach, a little less sand, but it had the perfect amount of trees spaced out just right. And it was where it needed to be. We were, we were needing a spot at that moment. And we found it. How'd you sleep, Chris? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I slept like I usually do. Eh. Eh. You feeling ready for this today? Yeah. First time in Class sure. 4 Creek? Ready for it. Yeah, yeah. After three days of hiking for 10 hours a day, a little sleep. Yeah. yeah. Let's just go through some Class 4 Rapids. That sounds good. <laughs> it's, um, it's actually only been two days of hiking. But, and one day, only half a day hiking, and the rest was sleeping and rafting days, but thursday friday saturday thursday we we hiked for a couple hours maybe no, four hours, five hours. Five, okay five hours in the dark on the highest thursday, mountain in around thursday 10 solid hours saturday solid no 10 yes 10 9 to 6 9 to 6 yep we didn't stop at 6 jack so it was like 11 hours 12 12 hours of hike. okay so and then yeah. Yesterday, nine to five. So. And then we hot dogged and wrapped the rest of the day. If you're in a work week, that'd be about three days. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for that morning interview. How'd you sleep, man? Oh, it was pretty solid. I would say last night was the best, tonight was second best. And then the first night was, you know, probably just getting used to the sleep system. Right on. Right well, on. And how would you rate this campsite? I would say it's really good considering what our one to ten. Were. One to ten. Last night was a seven. I'd say five. A five here? Five. Okay. I thought it would be higher, but I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> the guys are five and six. I was thinking like a seven. Ooh. But more importantly, it was the right place at the right time. Yes. That was bothering me, sorry. And um we maxed out the day. Absolutely. So now is the moment Gatewood's been waiting for. We're gonna start it out with a little mile of class two, three warm up, and then we'll be in the gorge. So we're stoked. Yes. We're gonna get the Texas on this morning. We're gonna get throttled today. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's gonna get throttled. He's got style points and sometimes the beast admires style points and he, and he lets you off the hook a little bit. Yeah, hopefully. So we're going for it. So I guess now is as good a time as any to tell you about these alpaca rafts. If you're not familiar with them, uh, they're very popular up in the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, places like that. Not so much here on the East Coast, 
but um the functionality and capabilities of these things is incredible uh, yesterday we just threw the rafts in the water put the packs on top and that was fine for the water we were going through but today we're going to use the gear hatch feature they got a zipper in the back and uh that opens up the the whole tube that holds the air so we're gonna be able to undo these zippers here load the back of the boats with the gear and uh, reduce the weight up front and then kind of control everything so uh we're looking forward to that feature we didn't really use it yesterday because we didn't need to but in this last little section here we could all feel the difference with the push of the water you don't want that nose weighted down at all so if you were just crossing a lake or floating some shallow stream and you didn't want to mess with it just throw the pack on the front but if you're going to get a little bit aggressive white water you want to go ahead and keep the weight to the rear there but for all us guys here at the river kings which now includes gatewood brown we'd like to say a big thanks to alpaca for sending us these rafts to make these uh to make this trip happen if you're interested in trying them out uh look them up alpacaraft.com give them a try give them a talk tell them what you're doing they might be able to send you a demo and uh i mean they're fantastic You want to lead out? Just follow the flume. So began the last chapter of our journey. And any journey requires two ingredients, energy and the mental state to complete it. When climbing a mountain, all the energy needed to complete the journey is coming from within. The only thing you need to harness is your mind. You need the willpower to keep putting one foot in front of the other until you reach the top. A river is different. When you begin a journey on a river, all the energy needed to complete that journey is underneath you. You just need to find a way to harness that energy. And just like in life, when the waters are calm, you can pretty much do what you want. But where we were headed, things were different. You need to know where to go, when to go, and how to go. And there only may be one place to go. Sometimes you can't fight it, you just need to go with the flow. And sometimes you need to fight, like you're the third monkey on the ramp to Noah's Ark, and it just started to rain. And in the middle of all that you'll have going on, you need to take the time to look up and appreciate the beauty of where you are. Greg's absence was notable this morning. Perhaps more than anyone, he wanted to paddle this stretch of river. And while we were missing our friend Greg, a rendezvous with destiny was underway. Not only were we gonna find our adventure, the river was going to bring us some new friends.
Well, we are here in the gorge. That's the first rapid of it. Gatewood, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. You ready, Chris? Yeah. And, and Squirrel? All right, you can see it changing. Let's get our raft on.
There you go. Very nice. Perfect. Stroke. Nice. And just like that, we were coming out of the gorge. The group consensus is that we could paddle a river like that for a month. But now we were savoring every rapid and the bedrock river bottom. We knew this was gonna end. And as we wound our way out of the gorge, 
a lot was going through my mind. We had just completed the last of the big obstacles. Now we just had to see out the rest of this river. The next goal was the confluence of the Johns River, about three miles downstream. You really couldn't have a better day, a better group of friends, or a more beautiful place to wind out a trip. The boys had come through, and you could see them start to relax. Up till now, I was the only one telling them they would be fine. They wanted to believe I was right, but they had to prove it to themselves. They had to harness the river. And with the gorge behind us, we were all hoping for just one more good rapid. And wouldn't you know it, after this scoochy shoal, Wilson Creek gave us just what we wanted. Pretty good rapid. And up just ahead was Brown Mountain Beach Resort. We were all looking to get a victory hamburger and maybe some sweet tea. So the resort is not open anymore. They only do weddings here. Kind of glad they weren't doing one when we landed. That would have been embarrassing. But uh, <laughs> gift shop is also not open, so we were kind of hoping to get like a hot dog or hamburger or a drink or something. But uh, Squirrel's Raft has developed some kind of small pinhole leak somewhere. Uh, so he's having to stop and put air in it every now and then. So we are here at Brown Mountain Beach Resort, and we have uh, hijacked this gazebo. Actually, I talked with the management uh, before we hijacked it and uh, said as long as we left no trash that we could borrow it for the afternoon for about 30 minutes to an hour. So they're going to be opening a restaurant soon and a bar uh, but at the moment all they do is weddings. And so they got one tomorrow. No food. So we're kind of MRE in it. Charging batteries. Waiting on rice. Gateway was much disappointed when he read his packet and he had to wait 20 <laughs> minutes to eat. 20 minutes? That's too much, but as you can see, just off to the side is the much less rambunctious and braided Wilson Creek again. Still got some nice flow, but this is a big island and a considerable bit of the water is on the other side, so it's kind of a lot of nothing right here. It starts like dams up down there. Yep, so uh, gonna finish lunch and then try to make a few miles. So we just finished a fantastic lunch, which consisted of a Chicken feta cheese MRE. Mm. Boy, was that good. I wish I could have that every day. So good. So definitely a shout out to the uh, management here for letting us steal that table for about an hour and sit in the shade. It was a, it was a nice touch. But now we're going to get back in the boats and make our way down this river. First stop at Daco Road. Next stop, somewhere about six miles down the river. See if we can poach up a campsite. So we got back into our scoochy little river, not knowing what it would bring. We were just hoping we wouldn't have to do too much walking. And there were still a few nice rapids along the way, just enough to keep you entertained. But looking ahead, I noticed there were no mountains in view. In less than a mile, 
We had left the gorge and we had also left the mountains behind. This was the last view of any mountain on the trip. Turning back around, we were paddling into the Piedmont. The river was still crystal clear, but we had the welcome advantage of shade. And we got to enjoy a new type of beauty. is repaired. Tyvek tape. Apparently that's all it takes. We'll find out. That was pretty easy. So as we paddled up to the official end of Wilson Creek, it was more than just a place where two rivers meet. Today, it was the confluence of lives as almost unbelievably, we arrived at the same moment as Dirt Dauber and Kyle. Get out. Fantastic. What's your name? Pete Beck. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. The River King. And this is Gatewood Brown. He's from Texas. Yeah, he's a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah he's I'm, joining us. Oh, no way. This is crazy. I checked it every now and then, man. Yeah. I told, uh... Wait a minute. Is this the guy we've been watching? Yeah. yeah. River King. King. River King. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah, man. Good stuff. Get some on YouTube. Y'all were on the Callaway Peak? Yep. Yes, sir. Y'all didn't take his rafts up to Callaway All of it. In the pack, we did. Every they they pulled up and go... Where did y'all put in it? Yeah. Mortimer. Y'all came down off the mountain? We, we just bushwhacked all the way to, to uh, Mortimer, basically. Y'all down the mountain to see trail, y'all. Mm -mm. yeah. made our own trail. <laughs> yeah, so I heard you say something about bushwhacking. Yeah, we were bushwhacking, yeah. brother. Yeah. Holy That's sweet mother. Cool. We are here with Dirt Dauber and Kyle and uh, some others. And they've been watching the channel, and they were tracking us at Mortimer, and they were out today thinking maybe we'll see him up here at uh, John's River. And sure enough, we came around the corner, and here he is. So, uh... 
That's awesome. So we spent the better part of an hour floating down the river with our new friend, Dirt Dauber. We told stories and laughed and made some plans for the future and just enjoyed the afternoon. We floated on down the river while he held up to wait for the rest of his crew. And I reflected on all the trips I've taken and all the country I've seen. And the common thread that brings it all together for me is the people you meet. It was hard to imagine that just a few days ago, I really didn't know Gatewood. Now he seems like an age old friend. And then there's my River Kings. There's nothing like doing a trip with longtime friends. We've done it all together. The pace of the river was fast. And even though there wasn't a whole lot of scenery to look at, it was a very enjoyable afternoon. And it hammered home the different perspectives we gained on the trip, as each segment was so unlike the others. This was the least amount of effort we'd spent the whole week. And it was the fastest time we'd made. but we were having trouble finding a camp spot. And I've been down this road before. We thought this island might work, but it was bushy and overgrown and filled with poison ivy. So we found ourselves in the age old game of finding a home for the night. And I'm not sure what it was. Perhaps we were mesmerized by the current and the ease of travel. Perhaps we were just that tired after everything we had done. But none of us really seemed to care that we weren't finding a place to stay. We just kept drifting down that river. And I found myself staring at the bottom of the river like the dotted lines along a highway. We had made the comment that the only thing that would make this day better was a victory hamburger. A beautiful little place to get up with trees everywhere. Perfect hammock trees was just passed up. It's well, well, let's 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 correlate that to what we've seen since we've gotten on this river. It's the only campsite we've seen in six miles. We have to find something in the next less than mile and we passed up the first one we've seen and the only one we've seen. Look at him. He's like, no, it's got to come to me. <laughs> it's not the best line. <laughs> Way to finish it out, baby. So we're at the bridge, Corpening Bridge on the Johns River, which signifies the end of the trip, uh, at least the end that we planned. Uh, but we got here a little early because this this river is not good for camping. Uh, it is just a jungle. That's basically the whole thing. We found one spot we could have taken, and we did not. And now we're paying. So we'll see what they got down here at the bridge. It might be something on that beach we can uh, work out, but. We'll see what happens. Here at the bridge. Let's see what it looks like up here. No bueno here. And uh, we got some daylight left, so we're just gonna be pushing on. See what we can find. 
So Squirrel and Chris uh, have come through in the clutch force. We were worried. So it's not the best, but it's gonna work. Yeah, let's do that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. We just gotta get around that bush. So we found this pretty sweet depression right off the bank. Cleared out here, lots of open space. There's always something. There's always something, you just gotta look for it sometimes. So this is gonna be home for the night and I think it's gonna do swimmingly. Well, I just happened to know Dirt Dauber was gonna be getting out of the river at that bridge. And I had come up with a little plan. And I am actually going to uh, see if I can make a deal with Dirt Dauber. I'm gonna get him some River King bling if he'll take me to get a burger. So we are here at Wendy's. So Dirt Dauber, Kyle, they came and saved us here, and uh, we're gonna have our uh, we're gonna have our burger. Look, these guys are rock stars. Yeah, is it Dirt Dauber and Kyle? They are uh, saving our bacon tonight and taking us to Wendy's. So super appreciative. Let's go get a burger, boys. All is right with the world now, thanks to these fine, outstanding. Gentlemen, America's best. World famous Kyle and Dirt Dauber have provided us with the hamburger at the end of the trip. We didn't think we were going to get it, but here we are. Mm. How is it? It's the best one you've ever had? Try not to cry. <laughs> what do you think, Squirrel? You shed. Best one. I shed a single tear, one tear. For this burger. It's best. Fantastic. <laughs> well, thanks again, guys. See our little hole in the woods here. Uh, it ended up working out perfectly. There's plenty of firewood, and we're having a victory fire this morning for the expedition. We, we'd uh, just enjoy a little fire, which we have foregone most mornings, all mornings really. No time for it. Gatewood and Chris are awake, but in traditional millennial fashion. They are laying pointlessly in the hammocks for no reason and enjoying themselves. I don't know how they do it. Once I wake up, I gotta get up and get moving. These guys have mastered the art of wasting their life and I'm a little bit jealous. We got Chris and Chad making their way down the Johns River here. So now they're world famous. Likewise, man. So as you can see here on the Johns River, the banks are not conducive to camping. And uh, the other side, that's uh, about a 100, 200 foot sheer rock cliff. You can maybe see the rocks through that little gap in the forest. And it's just jungle vine thick everywhere else. No beaches, no rocks, just this mud and silt. And uh, it's a mess. You can see how slick it is. So what do you do when you're in a situation like this, trying to find some camping? Uh, there's a couple little tricks I know of when it gets to bottomland like this and it's super fine silt and mud. There's going to be these little potholes, drainage areas back in the back where the bank will actually be higher than, than the land behind it. And they're hard to find, but if you know what you're looking for, you can find them. So that's today's pro tip. When you see one of these coming out of the woods, it's not a creek. This is a wet weather drainage. Give it a look. I'll show you what we found. Uh, Chris and Squirrel got out of the boats 
and uh, verify that this was a good spot. So we'll just follow the sandy drainage around the corner. And what you'll find is there's these little basins where the high water stays and it stays flooded a little more than the land around it. And what that does is prevents all the bushy, just bushy thorns and cane and privet, all those other things prevents them from growing. But the bigger established trees will stay. And so hence our campsite. Chris is a little bit, um, a little bit slow on the take in the morning. He really loves a camera in his face for an interview before he's had his coffee. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. You having fun now? Do you have coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I do actually. Have... Our grizzled, seasoned, backpacking, pack rafting, class four veteran, Gatewood Brown. Now Gatewood is not a stranger to adventure. He just uh, somehow had never really turned his hardcore exploration and mountain climbing and all those things he does, he hadn't turned it into a long distance pack, you know, yet. So he was able to do that and check that box. Yeah. He likes some uh, high-end whitewater adventure. I think we got him hooked here. Absolutely. Are you going to get a pack raft? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I know, Chris, you going to get a pack raft? Uh, yeah, I think it's in the, in the future. Now, full disclosure, I'm not paid or have no sponsorship by pack raft except they did provide me these boats for the trip, and I do need to send them back when we're done. And uh, But I got to tell you, I, I've been in love with these little boats. I'm telling you, if you're looking to do something like this, if your kayaking skills aren't that high, and you have a seasoned, experienced, skilled friend that is willing to take you, this is a way to get into some bigger water than, you'd, than you would uh, feel comfortable in otherwise, because it takes a lot of the technicality out of it. Uh, does not remove all the danger from being on dangerous water. So don't, still don't do it alone. Still don't go if you don't know what you're doing or if you're with someone, uh, unless you're with someone who knows what they're doing and can save you. If you still get in trouble with them. Don't want to paint too rosy a picture. But they do keep you upright through almost everything. They will stop in a hole a little bit. You just got to be prepared to get out of that. But they're fantastic little boats, and, and they allow you to do some things you cannot do with kayaks, namely this trip. So we are uh, final look around. Looks like we got everything, and we are heading to the road. We can walk this drainage out of it's probably a couple hundred yards downstream of where we're getting picked up here and uh, one last little bit of bushwhacking and then wait for a truck Warriors. Yeah. You hear that truck for miles? Away? Yeah, you can. Woo! Woo! The blue beast, baby. Hey, mama. Hi. <laughs> Dad has arrived. How was it, guys? The trip is a success. Awesome. Yep. All right. Nobody's got a broken leg. No. Nope. Great. It was a success. <laughs> so uh, here see. we are again. Loading her up. Next stop biscuits so we are in Collettsville on the john river and we have made our way to the Collettsville general store and we're going to look for some breakfast here it's a pretty cool store if you're in the area they they pretty much got everything you need sausage biscuits sweet tea everything else you need and the air conditioning feels good things are back to normal here we So we're here at Collinsville. We have our biscuits. We have this DOT driver messing my shot up here. The, the bugs are a little thick in here, but uh, food's great. 
on the deck here with Lisa and Tabitha, and they run the place. They took good care of us this morning, so, uh, and as you can see, there's a River King sticker on the window. This is an official River King guarantee for everything you need if you're up in the area. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they'll take care of you. Call us for General Store. All right, so we are finishing up the trip. We came back up to get the uh, last of the food we didn't need, and uh, we kind of left it here at the store. So we're picking that up and we're heading on home now, but uh, PJ is here at the store with the River King stickers. So today's gear cache for this trip is here in Mortimer, North Carolina at Betsy's Country Store. And either PJ or Sarah will have the stickers. All you gotta do is ask whoever's here at the counter, do you have any River King stickers? And the first person gets both stickers and uh, and there you have it. That's right. So when you get your stickers, you can get a drink, a hot dog, world's best, wings, hamburgers, whatever they're serving, and uh, you'll be set. But I appreciate it again. These people Thank take you. care of you, and uh, it's a great place to be. So what is unsanctioned? The dictionary would say, lacking effective or authoritative approval or consent. It's taking on a trip that you know is at the edge of your limits. Of things your mother told you not to do. It's making a video that keeps your mother up at night. It's taking 60 pound backpacks up a near vertical trail. It's hiking an intense trail with your friends in the clouds at night. It's ignoring the warnings and leaving that trail on the top of the tallest peak on the most rugged mountain to locate a spring. Coming out of the rocks on the side of the mountain, guys. Wilson Creek. Oh my goodness. It's following that creek wherever it may roam and jumping in that deep pool. It's pushing on, even when you don't feel great. It's grinding out the miles on a trail, so you can see places like this. It's ignoring that trail and staying with the river. Sarah with an H. It's finding familiar faces and good food in the middle of nowhere. And it's not just blowing up your pack raft and floating down a beautiful river. It's taking all your friends through a class four gorge with all their gear. meeting strangers on a river, but considering them friends. It may have been unsanctioned, but it was also unforgettable. Onward! Well, this is the end of the road for Gatewood and I, uh, for this trip, for this anyway, trip. Yeah, for this hey, trip. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a fantastic time. The guy is a beast. Give his channel a look. It's Gatewood Brown. He's a superstar. He's got about a thousand subscribers now. I will be able to say he went on a trip with us when he was little. Because uh, <laughs> this guy's going places. So See you guys. Bro. See you, Pete.